So he is a nice horse, yes, and um, he's just he's just a different horse of yes, other yes, horses, yeah. you know. It's just you pick one horse and it's yeah. going to be good like that. It's, it's not happen every time. Yeah. But I mean, he could have made my name a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Paul, but Paul, Peter, and Tony, they did very well with the horse, and uh, yeah, congrats to them. Fresh off a victory and an encouraging second place yesterday at Hollywood Bets Scottsville. We're around the table here at Summerfelt Training Center, our normal home base for the podcast. And we sit here with Andrew Harrison and our guest today, Tini Prinsloo. Lovely to have these gentlemen with us and uh, to learn a bit more about Tini Prinsloo. Tini, how are you? Well, in your water. Good, thank you. Andrew, thank you. all good? I'm here. Nice to have some cooler weather for a change. Yeah, I know, but I can't sleep at night this year. And even with the weather, it's still humid. <laughs> okay, so lovely. We're here to learn a bit about Tinny and uh, touch base with him. Yeah, Tinny, well, let's start at the beginning. You come from a farming background. Yes. Uh, your, your father slid moly moly or holy moly. Right? <laughs> now, yeah, he's close to uh, Mori Mole. Mori Mole. Yeah, he's, there. he's still um, farming with cattle and sheep doing grass as well, um, Ireland's grass and teff, but he's far away from here so I can't get anything from him, it will be too expensive <laughs> to get it here, yeah, but yeah. he's still farming, yeah, we used to stay in town uh, in years back and then my dad bought the farm and so everybody is at the farm still, yeah, he's still going strong, yeah. Yeah, no, I used to drive past Moli uh, Moli to take my daughter to tape, which would be But how did you get from Moli Moli to... We are Kimberley. Uh, you were in the prisons or something, weren't you? Yeah, I, firstly, I, I started well, that's working. A bit personal, that's yeah. a bit personal. You were in the prison. You wasn't in the prison. <laughs> I, I you were in the prison. Yeah, I worked for the correctional services uh, also for a year and two months. And I said to my dad, listen, I'm going to go to the horses. And he said, are you mad? Because we had horses in bush racing and stuff like that. My dad had five horses. And uh, he said to me, are you mad? You're going to get yourself killed with the horses. So I started off working for Cliffy Otter. Uh, he was still training at the ball. And um, he had a lovely horse, sir. Yeah, he had, um, what was the name? Cliffy Otter, he had, a, he had a good sprinter. Yeah. It's a bit before my time, so I don't yeah, expect had, me to remember. Yeah, I still remember, I looked after him. I can't remember the name now, but um, yeah, he was a nice horse, yeah. And uh, yeah, from there on, I went to PE. PE worked for Alan Greer for a while. Uh, then for Bill Hillman and Rustenberg, and then I took out my own license. Yeah, that, then I started off in 2012, started off in Kimberley, went very well uh, with a few horses. Eventually we went from 13 horses to 45, uh, yeah, and then the COVID hit us, so we had to move. So, yeah, that's, that's more of the story. I think Kim Kimberley was quite a hard... Um Hard school, uh, it wasn't too much love lost to two, but then was it, was it? No, it was, oh, Kimberley was, it was hectic there. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody just wanted to win all the races and a very, very uh, hard to race. Competitive, yeah, yeah, yeah. Competitive, yeah. I mean, sometimes it was raining. We all, all the trainers at night time, we took the buckies, the trucks, the tractors. We went on the track just to race on the Monday because we, we couldn't afford to lose a race, race meeting, yeah. Meeting, yeah. But it was nice times and then... In, 2012, I also I got diagnosed with cancer and I went away. 2015, I got back. And then Andrew Fortune used to, to ride in Kimberley a lot and he helped me a lot. So I still take my hat off for him. He also helped me a lot, yeah. yeah. Mm. So you, you were champion trainer at Kimberley for quite a long time. Yes. Uh, I haven't shot all. And now, only once. Uh, only once. 2015. Uh, I'll still remember Muzi Eni was the jockey of the year. He took the trophy for that. I had the trophy for the best trainer, best horse, 
I took a lot of uh, trophies. Yeah, that was quite a nice time. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the, your, your awards because uh, coming to your office and seeing all the different trophies uh, is just testament to our, you know, of how good the times were in Kimberley. Who was the best horse at, at that year? You said you had horse of the year. There, can you remember its name? Why don't you know what? I had a, a few good horses. I had sudden surprise. That was Bud Matthews. He's passed away. He's won nine races for me. Uh, we had Lebuana, came from here, he was a champion. The best horse I ever had in, in Kimberley was Black Pepper, he won five in a row for me. Sure. Yeah, and then quite a lot of other horses like uh, Carlo, Sir Isaac, uh, Victoria Parks, he was a good sprinter. So yeah, it was nice times, yeah. She took the, the award for, for the sprinting. Uh, she was quite speedy and yeah, it was just nice times, yeah. But Tini, how did you get those horses away? Yeah. Tiffany was always regarded as a dumping ground thing. For us, they're not too good. Yeah, we used but to. But they used to go on the sand. Yeah. yeah, we used to find the trainers up here in, in Natal and ask them yeah, what is good for the sand. And I bought a few from Duncan Hells. Uh, he sent me some nice horses. Um, he said to me always, if you buy this one, it will win. And I promise you, he knew his horses because they came and they won the year. Yeah, so Duncan was a nice guy to bought from. But they're all over the place. We even got horses from Cape. Uh, we pay a bit of money those years for them to get there. But yeah, yeah that was up to yourself to get some horses in your stable. Yeah. Yeah. Then I had one owner, Hansi Dempers. He also passed away from COVID. He had like 14 horses at this stage with me. Sure. He's a big farmer and uh, he was a big farmer. I mean, I got all my Ote and a lot of uh, ravage from him, uh, good people. And uh, Ben Lopes, yeah, he also passed away from COVID. So, yeah, I, I lost a few clients from COVID, yeah. yeah. And then when they closed Kimberley, or what for the more far than Ingo, I know I went up there with, with Dean, the yeah, Anatomo, we went up there to see if they could start a uh, chariot racing there. Uh, <laughs> It was the first time I'd been to Kimberley. It was actually a really nice city, Danny. Yeah, Kimberley was nice, but you know what? I just think what I see now and what I do now, I think uh, Summerfeld is a beautiful place. Uh, yeah. I love it, yeah. I will never go back to Kimberley, to be honest. It's dry there and it's hot and cold and ice cold, but this place here is very nice, yeah. And, um, uh, you know, Andrew, you know what? If you're in a big centre like this, you have to pick your head up and go. Uh. You know, so, no, you've got a lot of competition there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but uh, so K Kimberley, you went Ashburton bound. Ashburton, you came to Summerfelt, uh, obviously because of the closure of Ashburton. Uh, how did you find that transition? Uh, because from day one, you, you've been determined to stay in the province, and I'm sure you look back and are very happy that you have. Yeah, why don't you know what, when... When Michelle Naira came to Kimberley uh, with all the other people, we, they said to us we can choose where we wanted to go. So I decided to come to, to KZN. Some people went to Cape Town, Corey Lensley, I think. Uh, some of them went to, to uh, the Vol. Um, yeah, so we got the Nasburton, and you know what, to, to move and lose your house and everything, I mean, it's harder. So. We fixed up the stables in Edward and we stayed there for a while and then on a day I was talking to Golf Puller and he said to me, no, there's much more stables here in Summerfeld than Asperton. And he offered us the block next to him, so we made it our place there. So it's actually nice, we stay at the stables, um, you know, saving a bit of money there, you know, and um, I just think, yeah, it's nice because you 24-7 there, if something happened with a horse, you're there. You, you, like the other night, one of my horses got cast in the box and luckily I was there. Otherwise, I would have found the horse dead the next day, I yes. think. But uh, yeah, it's very nice, yeah. But well, Ashburton, knew you had a good time at Ashburton. You had a lot of weakness here. Yeah, no, Andrew, you know, the, 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 the difference between the two places, some I felt you work on the straights or the bottom track. Um, Asperton is more like Kimberley, you know, you go around, the, the, the whole track is going in a circle. And that's how we used to work horses in Kimberley. Uh, I think that's why I done well in Asperton, but now, um, with the tracks, yeah, I thought, I figured it out more or less how to go. So the horses are performing, yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. 
the, uh, this whole transition hasn't come with, without any challenges and, and ups and downs. Um, you, you strike us as a person with very strong willpower, but how do you stay focused and how did you stay focused through all the ups and downs? Well, and you know what? If, if you move, there's, there's no plan B, you know. I, I go to, to Sommerfeld and I said to Elsa, you know what, everybody is telling us, yeah, it's better to go then, it's better to, to go wherever. I can't run up and down. You just have to focus on your horses, you know. Um, I mean, sometimes horses, a stable can go up and down. But, um, you know, for me to get up in the morning and you get some owners like Zayn and Rakesh and Piet Bernzaya and all those people, they're sending you quality horses. In Kimberley, we never had those quality, quality horses. So for that, I would say, if you get up in the morning here and you've got babies, unraised babies, and you can see what they can do. I mean, it's so much easier to get up in the morning and go and work your horses, you know, uh, to see better things coming. Yes. Yeah. But I know, because in Kimberley, you're getting all the and sick layman laters. So if you can win with those, and then you come to a place here where you're getting your better quality, which you should be getting all rolling with better. I mean, it's, it's, it's experience. So that if you can get bad horses to win, I get a good horse, yeah, you've no, got I, the best. Yeah, I had the best, yeah. I had the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk about main defender a little uh, bit later on. Uh, because that's an interesting story too, yeah. um, um, but we'll get there shortly. Talk about your family, kids, I mean, do you have any kids of your own? And of course you're married to Elsa. Uh, tell us a bit more about that. No, you know what, Elsa was also working for the Correctional Services for years. And I made a, re a resign from <laughs> the Correctional <laughs> Services. He went with me all the way, all over the place. Uh, yeah, she got two kids. I haven't got any kids here, yeah, so, but they like my own. I mean, I brought them up. They were still very, very young when I met Elsa, yeah. Lovely wife. Uh, sometimes, like Sean Wheeler is saying, she's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we yeah, all know where it feels, yeah, we all know how it feels. <laughs> yeah, but uh, oh, why don't you know what, it's just, it's just a joyride, you know. It's, for me, I know, I know the family stands behind me, but for me, horses is everything, yeah. Yes, yes. And I promise you this, yeah. I don't, I don't want to go and lay down and wait for other people to come in when the races. I'm, I'm going to stick my neck out there, you know. Yeah. I also want to achieve big races, you know. Your, your statistics are quite good. Uh, I mean, it's been, you, you, especially you, you're teaming up with Sean Veal, but in general, your stats, you must be pleased with what you, you're producing. Yeah, no one, and I'm very pleased huh, to go to the races and you know, you know what, you don't have that worry in yourself, you know, the horse is working well, you know the horse is going to run well, and then it happens, then you feel, okay, I've done my job, that is nice, yeah. Do you nice. have a big team, Tinny? I've got uh, five people working for me, um, and they're all good, two guys is um, from Harry Smith, one is from Kimberley, all the way from Kimberley with me still, okay. and uh, you know what, Warren, I, I can't ask for a better team, you know, they they're standing behind me. They, we can make jokes together in a stable, so it's nice, yeah. yeah. The story about Main Defender, um, you were the man, that, just tell us how it all started, because you found the horse, you selected the, the individual. Which sale was it at? Tell us about how you came across Main Defender. He's yeah, well, got a 100% strike rate with you. Yeah, oh, well, and you know what? Um, I met a guy with the name John Habib. I met him at Gravel Racecourse and he said to me, listen, I will buy your horse. So then one day he said to me, that was a Cape Yelling sale, 2022, I think. And uh, he sent me an Elsa up with the plane. He was supposed to come, he never arrived there. And then I went walking around, looking at the horses. And John Habib also said to me, yeah, he likes uh, Paul Fawkes, I, you know what, then we walk around and we saw the horse, he never had the best of legs, okay, but we bought him, he, he was standing nice and tall, mm -hmm. and I also bought a bomber girl that same um, sale, okay. and uh, let the flag fly, sure, okay, uh, so all three of them, they, they won their races, you know, yes. but, um, yeah, you know, it's just a pity that I took the horse away from me, because, 
I told him the horse will win first time out, and the horse won at 40 to 1. Yes. They made a lot of money, so <laughs> yeah, it's nice, you know, but uh, it's always like I said, you know, it's your horse, you can take it wherever you want to take it. Absolutely. Um, I can't withhold you with doing that, yeah, but um, he's a nice horse, yeah, and I don't think he will stop here. Yes. He's still yes. going to win some big races. And, yeah, but it's definitely luck. a feather in your cap that you were able to, A, you know, find the horse um, and, and take a bit of a chance with the legs. Um, and, and, and say to your owner, first time we'll win, etc., which you did. Um, I mean, that's still an achievement on its own. I remember that day, Scott. Oh, yeah. You uh, would out with him. Then he jumped over the bloody wall by himself. Yeah, you know, he was, he, no, he was a nice horse. He is a nice horse. Yes, and, um, yeah, but, a powerful fork. I mean, yeah, he's a powerful girl. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. You know what? He's just, he's just a different horse of yes, all other yeah, horses, yeah. you know. It's just, you, you pick one horse and he's yeah. going to be good like that. It's, it's not happened every time. Yeah. But I mean, he could have made my name a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Paul, but Paul, Peter and Tony, they did very well with the horse. And uh, yeah, congrats to them. Yeah. But you know, the horse, horse, I was thinking of, of Gondolier, you know, mm -hmm. with Pat and Tom. I mean, Pat was hardly at any horse. One of the July, yeah, it didn't do him any good. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, but uh, you, you, you're right in what you say, but uh, the fact of the matter is Gondolier won the, the Rothmans July then with yeah. Pat and Talm, and nobody can ever take that away from him. So, yeah. so that, that's absolutely that's awesome. Um, Tenny, you've got a good bunch of owners. You've, you know, you've always had, as you've mentioned right from the start, a good band of owners, um, which is hugely important. No, it is important, Warren. And you know, Warren, people, they've got horses with you. You have to train them, look after them. And when you say this one is ready, you must be sure of that. I mean, owners come and go. Yeah, you, can't, you can't hide that, you know. Um, but our Zane and Rakesh now at the moment, they're my biggest client in this table. Um, but you know what, in the end of the day, I treat all my owners the same. All of them. If it's your horse and I like it, I will find you first and say, listen, you're always good a chance. But it is important to have owners. You can't just carry on with nine horses all the time. You're going to burn out here. Talking about nine horses, uh, obviously with you know, owners, with clients, with statistics, uh, there's uh, plenty of sales coming up. Will you, uh, Prince Lou Racing, be up at the National Yearling Sales? Yeah, I'm definitely going to go, yeah. I'm definitely going to go and see what they got there. Um, pick one or two. Uh, Rakesh and Stan, I think they're behind me there. They also want to buy a horse, maybe. So there's some other owners also. So yes. we have to see what the prices are going to go for. Yes. And then we'll take it from there, yeah. Are you, have you got a, a stable syndicate yet, or, or is that something that you would maybe consider? Yeah, why well, don't you know what? I also always I wanted a sponsor, but I don't have a sponsor. Um, it's always nice to have a sponsor, but um, at the moment, you're yeah, nothing, yeah. So I, I hope to grow a little bit to have more horses racing. At the moment, I've got 15. There's another three coming on Saturday, so it will be 18. But yeah, we. I've got 24 stables, so if, if I can have 24 horses at this stage, that yeah. will be fair for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, at least I can look after everyone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The finding owners is tough these days. Yeah, it's very tough, Andrew. You know, it's very, very tough, yeah. And, and it's just, I think it's, it's, the thing it's, is it's just tough because everything's, you know, the whole knock-on effect, the, the economic situation of the country, yes, yes. Uh, businesses, etc., rise in costs. I mean, it's not that, uh, you know, owners are not interested. It's just that everybody is, is you know, it's, it's a luxury yeah, to so own a racehorse or even a share in a race. It's a luxury. Um, so it's tough. It is tough. And you've got to take your hat off to all the trainers that face the grind every day. And, uh, yep, it's, it's... But you've also got to make look at ways that you can make the owner's experience even better, mm. which is, 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 I think, hugely important. Yeah, yeah but I think in this game, it's also... You could be... A, an average trainer, but if you've got a good mouth, you'll watch it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I, think so, yeah. I was reading uh, that, that thing on Sporting Post, uh, Dylan Turner, with the, with the jockey that he's got there, Reese, Reese Clutterbuck, I think. And 
Tony's a very good jockey, but he doesn't open his mouth, so no, yeah. one, no one takes it. No. Okay, yeah, so, so, so you're a talker, you're good. Yeah, yeah you need yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. And so I know a few good. Well, I did know a few trainers that had good mouths on them. They were <laughs> too good. Um, um, that's, that's my downfall because I'm very quiet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need, um, I say personal, it's not uh, uh, personal, but uh, to find out about the homely things or the the, the, the behind-the-scenes things about Tinny Prince Lou and your favorite meal. I mean, if, if we take you for supper, where are we going? What do you like to eat? I will go to Belito. There's a place, I think they call it La Paz. Okay. Um, yeah, they've got nice burgers there. Okay. I like my burger. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then I'm a, a, a ram. I'm drinking rum, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're a rum man, <laughs> okay. Rum, rum and coke, okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing like a good rum. Yeah. 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 What's it? Uh, Red Hot. Red Hot, yeah. Red Hot or Captain Spice Captain Gold, yeah. Spice Gold. Spice, Spice, Spice yeah. Gold, okay. And then so. on odd days, I like my gin and tonic, yeah. No, no, <laughs> that's good, <laughs> drink. I've got you. <laughs> and uh, Rutini, do you have any uh, hobbies? I mean, anything, I don't know, racing is your life, but I mean, anything else that keeps you, you know, interested? Sports, yeah. maybe? No, not really sport, yeah, but I love going fishing. You know, that's another my, fisherman. Yeah, I like fishing. Yeah, so fresh and salt water. All the best oaks fish. Yeah, and all the best oaks. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, okay. and then sometimes hunting when I go to my dad, we like to go and hunt a little okay. bit. Okay. So that's nice. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But but obviously when you're here at work and at at home, it's ninety eight percent. Unfortunately, yeah, okay. that's horses. Yeah, <laughs> and the family are getting cross with me with that because they always want to go and see the sea and they want to go there and there and there. Yes. Where are your sons over there? The one is in Belita. He's working at Zimbali Hotel. Okay. Yeah, and the other one is working in Durban. Um, yeah, I saw that they played yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember they, they were up there yeah, yeah, no. helping you, but no, 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 no they both working here. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, they're working here. Tini, uh, Richard Faree is on, you know, the, the, the words Richard Faree are on everybody's lips. Uh, he rode a horse for you, a Stingray, not so long ago to victory. It was a phenomenal ride. What is your opinion on, on this whole Richard Ferry hype as he goes to break the record? Well, and you know what? I think he's going to break the record because he's such a good rider. He makes horses run. The way he's bouncing in the cell and in, uh, just the way he rides a horse, it's, so, it's unbelievable. This opening any horse home. Uh, yeah, there's some favourites. They, you know, horses must be ready on the day of races. But you know what? He's, he's top class jockey. Yeah. Top class. There was a lot of rides, a lot of false favourites too. I mean, you yes. yeah, that happened. That happened. Anton, as soon as he had done more, the yeah. horse that he, you really could have five minutes shorter than it should be. Yeah. yeah, he's a very pleasant guy. He always talks to me. And he's a fisherman he's too. A, he's a fisherman too, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. got his boat here, family. Why, why are you sitting here? He <laughs> to, uh, yeah. He's gone away. It was reported on the Sporting Post. Yeah, he's but gone you know, away for a few days. I think there's a lot of these trainers, if they can have him on their horses, even if the horse got no form, they will be happy to have him on a horse because he just brings the best out of all. Yeah, I remember Byron Foster when we did have him on the podcast. He said, if, they, if, if his agent phones him, he says, Jim Richard, well, for instance, you know you're on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> two, yeah. two horses that I can remember just off the top of my head recently, one was Stingray and the other one was uh, Louis Curson's horse for Mr. Mario Ferreira up the inside beating Sweet Julia at Hollywood Bits Gravel. Uh, I mean, both those horses, you know, he really extricated every ounce to get that horse over the line. And as I said in the one interview, it's just a pleasure to watch. It's like watching your favourite rugby player score a great try. I thought that horse was dead and weary at all time out there. He missed the first as well. We always get yes. right up to go. Uh, all green in somebody. But saying that yesterday when my horse won, yeah. I mean, the saddle slipped. Sure. Sean Bill also, what a rider. Yes, to absolutely. Come, to come from the turn, Pull it out wide, and he still got up to win it. Yeah. That's that's a good ride. Yeah. 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 I think that was the ride for the month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he just got it up. Yeah, but Absolutely. yeah, we can't take anything away from Richard. Yeah, I think he's he's a legend. Well, I think uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we just want to quickly touch on a few uh, a few uh, notices. Um, you have heard that uh, the national yearling sales is around the corner. There is also a, a sale coming up uh, that's going to be hosted by Cape Sales as well. So plenty of opportunities to buy horses. Uh, it would be remiss 
uh, if we didn't pass our uh, condolences to the uh, Adams family. Hassan Adams sadly passed away yesterday after a long, brave fight with cancer. Madison Park stud and a man of racing, um, and just lovely that uh, he, he, we were able to have him in the industry for so long. Yeah, I, I, I wrote a little bit of a thing for him last night at four minutes and got a secret. He didn't actually realize how influential he was in, in racing. Yes. But he, he, when he was director of, of was a director of the Gold Circle in the Grand Braid, where he had, I remember Bill Lambert to say to me that. He always had an opinion. Everybody listened. I mean, he was. I mean, he, the son met him. He told him I was the the uh, sponsorship with the evil he was struggling. Oh. Um, and he looked after his, his community. So, yeah, we. And sad. Yeah, certainly very sad. And our condolences, as we say, to the Adams family. Lots of racing action before we wrap up. We must talk about the racing action. And you pointing out the window. Yeah, but if you look. Um, the, the new protocols to for the heat wheel um, export husks. Elaborate, oh. please. You're quite right. I did forget. It slipped my mind. Elaborate. What great news that was. Well, this great news, especially for, for the place of got piece of horses in the yard and also for for breeders. Um, because, I mean, before it was such a living. If you bought a two year old or a year leg, it took you that six months to get it to where it was going straight away. So, Hong Kong buyers, the, the English buyers, even the Americans might come yeah. along and the Zalvas is it running dirt cheap, mm. go, ran dollar Yeah, the exchange, absolutely. Oh, wow. So you're quite right, yeah. it will open. And then, uh, and then was Mike Cock was saying then to the other thing, yeah, no, I was saying that. Uh, the buy festival's lost a bit of its loss because can't get a real horses leak at all. And now we can go and show them up and go. Yeah. And of course, uh, Dubai is big racing coming out of the... Uh, yeah, we'd like to buy a World Cup. On the yeah. Yeah. Correct, yeah. correct, correct, correct. So that is uh, yeah. also was some fabulous breaking news. Um, racing, uh, Sunday the 31st of March at uh, Hollywood Beats Gravel, Easter Sunday. Uh, it is uh, the Bali Turk, Grade 3, the Imsum Kudu Stakes, Grade 3, and then the KwaZulu Natal Stakes, non-black type. So we're starting to warm up the engines for the season that's uh, around the corner. We already saw a out-of-province horse uh, um, run at Hollywood Beach Scottsville yesterday. A good second, and uh, I'm sure will be a force to be reckoned with in the upcoming races. Justin Slath coming in here. Yeah. Yes, a couple of a couple of the teams are in town. I believe Michelle Ricks is here. Uh, Glenn Cotson's had horses travel up. Uh, as you just said, Justin Snaith came up nice and early. Anyone who's got two out on 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 correct three of them on Sunday with. With slow part of it, how, how early does the Guineas horse come out to let that early? Yeah, so, they, they, so the, balls are, the balls are rolling. The, 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 the action is starting, and uh, I believe that Dean Kaname is sending some up soon, so it's going to be a wonderful time of year. So, plenty of racing, as we say. Sunday the 31st, where those features are, Monday the 1st, Wednesday the 3rd, and in between that, racing around the country. So, plenty, plenty, plenty action to, to look forward to. Uh, to all uh, the, the viewers that celebrate Easter, all the very best to you and your family and your loved ones over this very special weekend. But gentlemen, uh, lovely to see you again and have you in, in, in a well, sacred photograph. I won't be back again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thanks Tini, for having me. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Just to, I know you've been on the podcast before, but it's nice just to cut, touch base and, and have a catch up yes. because things have changed. And uh, we wish you and the family and your string and your owners all the very best. And, Thanks for being uh, being part of this podcast. Thank you so much, Warren. No, Thanks, Andrew. Here we no, go. No, we will catch up with you. We will put you under pressure. And maybe no. we all need to hire a boat. Yeah, and go fishing. Yeah, fishing. All the, all the fishermen, uh, uh, Louis Quisson, uh, yourself, Richard, uh, Tini, all the fishermen. I love you. A few blast you with the said it, don't like. So that's a wrap from all of us uh, to everybody from behind the scenes that uh, make this production possible. Thank you. Be safe and uh, enjoy your uh, long weekend. And we will see you as always in the number one box. Remember to subscribe, like and follow us on the Gallup TV YouTube channel. If you missed last week's episode of In the Box Seat, click right here and you'll be able to watch it at your leisure.